Hey guys, welcome back for episode two of the ultimate camper build. Uh, I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. Things have changed a little bit since the first video I, well, since the re-edit of the first video I put out. My plan is from conception to completion should uh, not take me more than six weeks. It's a little bit aggressive, I understand, I, but I'm not working on it full time. I have, do have other things going on two weeks into it and I've almost got it completely framed up. At the end, like I say, I am going to give the plans away for anybody that wants to do this on their own. I'll also bring uh, some suggestions if you're, obviously you're probably not going to be driving the same kind of truck I am, but I'll tell you how you can modify this to fit your vehicle. And the further framing is going to be done in the first four parts and putting the skin on it that'll be probably a couple of videos and then we'll probably do a, uh, an episode for each one of the following like installing the air conditioner installing the uh, electrical installing the plumbing those will probably all be three independent uh, videos I'm going to pick up right where we left off so this is the side rail this is the cross rail that goes behind the cab. Um, and what you saw me doing was drawing this curve right here so it matches exactly uh, the bed of the truck. I've been wrestling with uh, how to join these. I mean, I could do a straight lap joint. Um, I, I guess that would probably work just as well as anything, but the other thing I have is the option to make a mechanical lock. When I first started to take on this project, I wanted to get on the road quick. So I decided I was just gonna buy a truck cap and do a typical camper build inside the cap. And I had no intention of filming any of that for YouTube. I just figured it's been done to death. Um, and then I started looking at different caps. Buying new on a truck cap has a lead time. It could take anywhere from four to six weeks to eight weeks or more. You hear me refer to it as a camper. You hear me refer to it as a cap. So to distinguish between the two and to explain this build a little bit better, I'm building a cap. Then as you know, human nature, I say, well, if, since I'm building my own, I might as well customize it a little bit. So I started making a list of things that I wanted to be different about my cap. One, I wanted to be able to sit upright in it. Uh, I didn't want to be able, to, I didn't want to feel like, you know, I'm like in the shoebox. Then I said, well, if I'm gonna sit upright in it, why not stand up in it? So the height went up. And when I sat in the corner of the bed and looked across, I thought, well, this is only a little over five feet wide. It's, you know, a little over six feet long. Why don't I make it so that it's wider? Then I thought, well, I'm gonna cost, spend a little bit of money on this. Um, not so much on the basic truck cap build. I could do that probably for less than, even given the size, I could still do that for uh, probably less than what I would buy a new one for. Um, but with all the added features, as the design grew, so did the needs grow. All right then, so a um, little bit of change of scenery here. I'm also cheating. I have a piece of paper with things written down on. So some of the other things that I wanted to talk about is I wanted to talk about the different elements that I'm gonna be incorporating into it. To get all the benefits, all the bonus out of the unit uh, that I have in mind, is I wanted to basically do everything. <laughs> I didn't make the bar real low. So it's gonna have uh, 
RV air conditioner. Uh, I've selected the one that I'm gonna use for that. I'll talk about that when we get to that portion of the build. Be completely outfitted for power, so I want it to have solar. I want it to have uh, the, the ability to plug a generator into it. I wanna have the ability to use shore power if I go to a campsite. Uh, everything to charge the batteries or to just be able to direct draw from those uh, services. Um, now that I'm a video editor, okay, so I'm not a video editor, but I hope you think this one's better than the last one. Sleeper has to be able to carry some weight, so how do I design this? I want this truck cap to fit this truck like a glove. I want it to follow the all of the lines. I want it to come out with a very finished uh, appearance. Here's the way, this is what I start with, is I have an off cut. It's probably about, I don't know, 3 eighths of an inch thick. There's a gap between the, the uh, front of the bed and the uh, back of the truck cab. I bought uh, the extruded aluminum piece. I picked this up on Amazon. Um, the suction cups that I'm using, I bought those on Amazon as well. An added piece of insurance in case the, I'm going over rough terrain and the cap dips down. Obviously, I don't want it to smack into the top of the truck. And with that clearance, or with the uh, roof rack, I'm going to actually wrap padding around it just to give it a nice soft cushion. So clamping uh, a cross piece that would represent the bottom of the uh, sleeper. I've got my 90 degree, um, I guess, point of origin. Got a square. I'm looking pretty square. Drop this down just a little bit. That's perfectly square. What I was mentioning a minute ago is you could erect something like this, take a tape, measure from the back of the truck and then make marks on your your 45 about every half inch down and just or every inch down and just mark what the distance is on them then make a pen plot draw your lines connect the dots and that'll give you your contour um, i have another way that i think is faster easier something to that effect and what that is, I have a scrap piece of material that I'm going to just lay against the back of the truck. I'm going to clamp it all together. So I'm just going to grab the pencil with about an inch of finger sticking out. I don't even have to look at it. All I have to do is... And we'll see how good of a outline that made. Well, it looks kind of cruddy, but yeah, that's how I come up with the contour for the truck to keep it nice and tight. And I think that uh, me personally, I think that's probably about the easiest way to pull it off. On either side of the window, in my truck, it has a center window. If you have a, a complete slide down, you can you have actually more uh, flexibility. You can adjust it. If you don't have a if you don't have a sliding glass in the back of your vehicle, well, maybe you should go buy one. Um, the reason why this is important for me is this window now becomes uh, a backup, a secondary. Uh, option or secondary option I guess to if for whatever reason I don't have the battery power and I'm not on shore power and I'm not running a generator <laughs> if I have no other option I always have the option to start the truck turn the air conditioner on open this window and it will cool the cap to a certain degree I don't know how well I guess time will tell right this is the contour that I cut out of it. I won't lie to you, it wasn't exactly right, so I went in and took a disc sander and 
took out some of the uh, places that needed a little bit of attention. So now what I'm doing is I'm kind of setting it up to the window, I'm just eyeballing it. I've got the contour shaped down pretty good. I think I've got what I'm looking for and I'll call that good enough. Imagine that you're building a deck and you have the section that's sticking out. You don't want more than one third of this overhanging the, uh, uh, the support. Um, but I obviously can't do that because if I have a third of it sticking over the supports and then two thirds of it sticking on the other side, the other two thirds, the other two thirds is gonna be in the middle of the living compartment. I'm gonna have a two by four here and a two by four here that are gonna be attached to a cross rail that'll go across the, uh, the sleeping area or the, the support. And then on the inside and the outside of each one of these is going to be a gusset that's gonna start at the bottom, go all the way to the top, and it'll be bolted through uh on bolted through the four by four and then they'll be doubled there'll be one on either side with support blocks in between and i'll have one at on both sides and then i'll have both sides of the two by four will be gusseted so that'll be a total of eight pieces or eight gussets that stick out so what i'm going to do I'm going to take my material, I'm going to start it, the curve, right where the, uh, the five and a quarter inch line comes out. Make sure that it's set square. Man, I couldn't do that again if my life depended on it. Okay, so uh, I just want to take a second and kind of just show what these, uh, I keep calling them gussets, there's probably a better term for them, but so uh, now down here at the bottom, it's a little bit too close, but that's because I couldn't clamp onto the board quite right. And uh, so you'll see it gives me about an inch, maybe a, maybe inch and a quarter, inch and a half. Um, between the glass and what will be the, the face of the camper. What happened is kind of the reason why I'm a few days longer putting this video out than I video out than I intended to um, was is that I had constructed this front end and when I was load testing it, I broke it. Uh, so this I had done this with two by four instead of a four by well, it's actually three by three. Um, I had used a two by four. And when I cranked down on that thing, uh, it literally split right down, the, it split long ways down the center. Um, you all probably know what this is, bevel gauge, so I can set the bevel set that up so I can get these same walls the same on both sides. Yeah. Get my pitch, get my pitch consistent. 
this is all set with a square. Uh, these walls are all perfectly vertical. I don't really rely on being level because garage to floor slopes and uh, you know I use it to try and just visually give me a break. Um, make it as easy as possible. Uh, so get it pretty level just to so visually it works and then I use the squares from there to make sure the walls are square vertically, the bevel gauge to set the, the pitch in. So what you guys see me doing right now is uh, making more of these uh, small ribs um, and I'll offer the caveat this time that this is after I took one of the ribs made the uh, necessary uh, fine tuning cuts to get everything exactly the way it needs to be. And then I sanded that one, completely finished it so that it's basically perfect, perfect for what I'm wanting to do. purposely elected to use cabinet grade plywood. It's the most expensive and right now because of this whole COVID crap it's 60 bucks a sheet and you know four sheets I got $240 and just plywood alone. Um, but all in all it's not that bad. There's a reason why I chose to go with the cabinet grade plywood and <clears throat> if you take a look at the side cut, the laminations uh, in this three quarter inch. There are 11, looks like 11 layers, 12 layers uh, that have been glued and pressed together. So this ends up being much more dense, much stronger, in my opinion, than a typical sheet of three-quarter inch plywood. Either way, this is the way I chose to do it. If you decide to build one of these, uh, you know, use what you want. Uh, but this is why I'm do why I elected to go with what I did. But since I'm at it. <clears throat> The reason I chose to use, I choose to use two by 10 by 16s uh, rather than just going out and buying uh, two by fours is, is that especially if you get yellow pine, that stuff is dense. I mean, it may not be a hardwood, but it damn sure cuts like hardwood. Where it protrudes out past the front of the living space, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, there, you know, there's a dome, like an arc that drops down to the front of the uh, sleeper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie those in so it will have some lift there. Uh, you know, it's a tension compression thing. I'm not going to explain that, but and then I'm going to do the sides to kind of frame in the sleeper area. Up above that beam is where the air conditioner sets. Uh, there's going to be a double beam here, but I need to actually make two more of the full ribs like we're on the back because this area from here to here is where the shower slash, uh, I don't know, what are you going to call it, comfort room goes. Plumbing will be in, this, there'll be some plumbing in this area right here because that's Going to be fit with an outside shower as well as an inside shower. So these will actually be the cross beams. 
pressure and joists that go from side to side on top. 